Hey cuties! We're finally entering a new chapter in the main story. And like Wonders has insisted, we reminisce on the main quest content from the past year first. I don't make the rules, Life Wonders does. So let's entertain them. Important to note, since the daily quests have been reworked, the criteria for the respective sub ratings have been updated accordingly. I'll be updating the free quest criteria as soon as I read through chapter 14 and finally unlock its blossom farms. Previous ratings I've done may potentially be outdated as a result. Okay, let's check everyone out! A few years back, Life Wonders released a variety of never before seen gameplay effects that shook the game. The introduction of these effects were understandably undertuned, as is the case with Furufumi, who introduced us both to board wide debuffs and clock timings. In different clocks, this bookworm reduces enemy skill rates and defenses while healing his team. These features aren't reliable like his other role as a tank board wide charge attack switch. He can choose to place Furufumi in front to soak up damage with two damage mitts which will deny his own charge. Or, he can keep him in a quieter section of battle, where he quickly builds both his own and his ally's charge. Nowadays, his best use case is being a multi-buff and debuff source with minimal commitment for team synergies. Working out at the library apparently doesn't make you that strong. Sphinx. Much like Eita, Sphinx is a much beloved character that can coerce his team to clear columns. This kit seems like quite a puzzle with all its acquired skill statuses it applies, but the solution is actually quite simple. Just move him behind three frontlining allies to amplify their damage and extend the range to magic. The questions for his targets follow a similar pattern. Their ranges are reduced to blow, and landing a hit now heals. If anyone fails his riddles and whiffs, they'll suffer the Sphinx's wrath. Allies will empty their charge meter, while enemies will suffer a defense penalty. His targets, also suffering increased dot vulnerability, might have some doubts about his riddles being fair, and those doubts would be justified. Great for farming and tall maps, though watch out for some unreliability. No wonder he's such a popular unit. Christina. Ah, what an honor it is to be the face of an archetype. Christine, the darling of board wipers, has now returned for players to collect more dupes and strengthen her wipe. No one has told the Cespian the reworks to the script since her debut though, as she is by far the weakest instant board wiper in the game nowadays, weaker than even regular weapon changers. Dupes notwithstanding, this show start has no worthy follow-up though, other than a half-hearted attempt to get her charge up again by turn 3. Oh, to be the crowd favorite under the limelight, only to be swept under the rug. That's show business for you. Oh, yes. We have touring at home. Touring at home be like. This fade beast brings a calamity of misfortunes to passerby with offense mitt and charge meter depletion. If luck is not on the enemy's side, the one he approaches may attract more misfortune to themselves and those nearby. Skill Denial, Skill Rate Down, and Minor Dot. As one who grew in misfortune, Bagus knows how to exploit them in enemies, while mitigating their effects to himself through healing, defense amp, death resistance, and debuff mitigation. If you want to curse your rivals with a slew of misfortune, this black bear can help you be the best hater you can be. For luck of his time, the Shatter has Admiral Strength for where it's needed the least. Algernon is a dueling type unit, rushing forward to deal respectable increasing damage with follow-up attacks and quickly filling his charge at the expense of his own health. With no death resistance and a poor damage mitt, Algernon is destined to wither away in most cases. He may only realize too late that the augmentations done to his body were done not to make him stronger, but to make him die faster. For your fleeting strength and beauty, you'll be getting some flowers next to your grave. Nobumichi. There aren't too many units designed to pair up with one other ally, but Nobumichi really wanted to play good cop, bad cop with someone. This banana dog rushes ahead and whacks suspects with his baton into his column, letting him and his assigned partner deliver their harsh brand of justice. As long as he's kept that tip-top shape, Nobumichi will shrug off nearly all damage from resisting individuals, and will jump in the line of fire to heal and protect the partner he's sworn never to doubt or betray. His health is prone to chip away without maintenance hour, so his own healing likely won't be enough to keep his own defense up. Graduating at the top of his class, this police officer takes the tailed notes from his partner, copying their every buff beat for beat. I feel like committing a crime suddenly. Hope he doesn't lock me up and make me take his banana. Lightning round! Have any of the returning topics changed since the release of the new dailies? Let's take a look. Three, two, one! Let's get 
does not play dice. Big Bang. All your base don't belong to us. Hey, kiddies! I will always remember you. Memory deleted. Clear. <laughs> These new mobs are awakening something in me. Ah, gotta focus. All right, let's continue with the five stars. <laughs> Column clears as a paradigm didn't exist not too long ago, and Tsukuyomi was an example of the brick coming before the wall. By dealing moderate damage on his own column while amping damage of his partners beside him, this by Shonen Host was one of the few options many players had for a long time for quick laying tall maps. Missing too many classes has made him fall behind the current trends, as his personal damage and strict timing and positioning of his ally amp doesn't keep up with even 4 star column players nowadays. While he does have a board wipe in his moderate filling charge, he's also fallen behind in this front. I think I'll pass on this male host. Do you have any ones not curated towards Fujoshi? This storm color was originally known for wasting weaker enemies away slowly across many turns, quickly building up to his board wipe over a few turns while avoiding confrontation and relative safety. By his grace, this world rep protects his team of fledglings while boosting their rates. Calling down so many adults during his world has raised his bloodlust, making him deal even more flat damage to enemies nearby. Over 4 turns, he can intensify the frostbite of those directly in range. The embrittled enemies become easier to shatter at the slightest touch. Units like Jacob or Horkyu Kamui, who have advantage over every stack of freeze, can easily grind Korpokuru's victims to dust. While extremely exploitive, the trade-off of having to wait 4 turns is most times not worth it. But in his frozen world of Kamui Kotan, his victims have nothing but time. <laughs> In this crater deity's presence, your whole team receives the retributive power to smite the smoldering while resisting the charming wilds of outsiders, and the enemy is denied their deva-given immortality. Ahura Mazda himself inflicts greater destruction over the inflamed, as she sets ablaze with his charge. He gets up close to denying enemy skills before striking with a permanent blow attack. In doing so, he'll reduce his target's defense and damage while restoring his own immortality and instantly maxing his charge meter. Building his boss killing charge every other turn while remaining completely unkillable through death resistance upkeep, but penalized by low range, his solo carry potential is stifled by distance. He might find more use for his global utility effects. Whatever you decide, may the clarity of Asha find you. Loki. This infamous trickster god wants to make a fool of both the enemy and the player. For the enemy, he cusses out their entire family and enrages them. Uno reverses every other debuff, incessantly denies their damage, defense, and skills, and flips off everyone even after death for massive flat damage. For the player, he remains immobilized for the first 12 turns and resists classification of traditional unit archetypes, playing the unheard of roles of secondary tank with his reactive damage and debuff mitt, and secondary damage dealer with his follow-up defense myths, total defense piercing, and insanely high quick charge fill after providing potentially endless upkeep to his buff purging lethal charge. It is such extreme strengths, the only real weakness is his unwillingness to comply with today's standard strategies. But hey, no need to make a big deal out of it. It's just a prank, bro. If Kengo achieves his insane solo carrying potential through guts tanking, Kirito does it similarly with evasion tanking. That understates Kirito's incredible strength, though. In exchange for throwing his allies under the bus by depleting their health and rejecting help from his allies through hots, Kirito boasts the ability to mitigate most damage, to deny enemies their skills and charge attacks, to resist debuffs including skill denial, and to deliver massive personal and boardwide damage amp with a moderate filling charge. His boardwide amp with the ability to equip the Genocider's Blossom Booster has made him a popular pick for farming this past year, to say nothing of every other strength. You don't hear much from him due to his lack of social connections and his inability to dodge once he's drained himself to 1 HP, but don't sleep on him. He may come to regret losing track of this ripper. Big Remember when everyone from chapter 13 and 14 prologue banners got fantastic evolutions? Except for this dude. Eh, good times. This North American cryptid stops myth hunters in their tracks by breaking them in from the waist down with his conservationist allies, who are ardently fascinated by his energizing mystique. As the hype over Bigfoot's existence escalates, his power heightens to reach even those outside his range when his blurry photo charges into the front page of local news. 
But in today's globalized world, people are more interested in internet clout, looks maxing, and roasting than they are in the mid-strengths of urban legends. Let you fade into obscurity and peace. So much bait before the proper Chapter 15 ban release, but should you bite? The limited at base units are awfully tempting to pull for, for completionism and to unlock any special quests they may have. The work 12 4 stars, Boogie Manor Sphinx, are permanent and so can be redeemed during anniversary. But the 5 star spread is quite cruel, with the best ones, Masashi, Quantum, Kirito, and Loki, all not included in the rainbow ticket selection. Pull well, with caution everyone. There's something great in every banner, but Chapter 15's banner release and the following summer banners are just on the horizon. That's all for now cuties, catch you next time!